Prashansa, is everything good on your end? Are we alive, Prashansa? No. ृतपाचापाधिराम with the bountiful blessings of our Acharya Swamiji, we are now able to proceed with this lecture series on Dalita Khatranama. Uh, Acharya Swamiji has just returned after a two year long Vijay Yatra extending over large parts of India to Ganshepuram. Yesterday was the day when we observed the fixed Arasana of Paramapujya Sri Dayanda Saraswati Swamiji. Yesterday I had the opportunity of attending that Arasana and having Darshan of Kriva at Ganshepuram. We now Stopped with shloka number 45 last time. We continue now. Namaskar. Nitya Mukta Nirvikara Nishprapancha Nirashaya Nitya Shuddha Nitya Buddha Niravatya Nirantara Nishkarana Nishkalanka Nirupadhya Nirishvara Niraga Raga Mathani Nirmada Madanashini. In Shoka number 45, we saw that the three attributes, Shuddha, Buddha, Mukta, always are used while describing jnanis. Jnanis are described always as Shuddha, Buddha, Mukta. So, when jnanis are being bestowed by Devi with such qualities, it is obvious that she is Nitya Shuddha, Nitya Buddha, Nitya Mukta. So, Niravadya Nirantara. Nishkarana Nishkalanka Nirupadhihi Nirishvara. We are continuing with the uh, description of the qualities of Parabrahma Sarupani. Parabrahma Sarupani has no qualities. That is why she is called Nirguna. When I say qualities, whatever we want to imagine as qualities about Parabrahma, because Neti Neti is the description of Parabrahma in Upanishads. That means not this, not this. It is this, nobody can say. So whatever we are saying is an approximation to be able to imagine to the characteristics of Parabrahma. So, Nishkarana means she is there without a cause. For all of us, she is the cause. For all the creation, she is the cause, including Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva, and other devatas, she is the cause. Whereas for her, there is no cause, Anadi. Because she has no beginning, she has no end, she is there all the time. So, Nishkarana, Nishkalanka. Nishkalanka means, Kalanka is a blemish, like we 
speak about kalanka and the moon so kalanka means a blemish a sin a fault a defect now all these apply to jivas all jivas have these kalankas that is why they are jivas if they were not having kalankas they would not have taken birth they would have been one with devi so the very fact that they are taking birth repeatedly means they have kalankas now these kalankas are nowhere near devi now to say that she is nishkalanka free from kalanka and to say also that she is the one who creates sustains and destroys the universe which happens through her power of maya this is what we have been saying to say all this does it not mean that she has the taint of this creation etc the taint of the givers taint of kalankas of the givers no that is what has been made clear by in fact i am going to come in one of the following names by her very presence this creation etc activities take place without any kartrutva without any action by her mere mere presence by her mere will ichha this things happen creation etc so it, so the question of taint doesn't arise just as the water on the lotus leaf does not stick to it water goes off in no time same way no kalanka no blame sticks to devi nirupadhi now these are various ways of describing the same concept concept is one and the same satvi chitta ananda now if we keep saying satvi chitta ananda it is a little difficult for us as ordinary human beings so we have to relate to ourselves kalanka we can relate to ourselves karanam we can relate to ourselves avadhyam we can relate to ourselves antaram we can relate to ourselves suddham buddham muktam etc we can relate to ourselves whereas if we keep saying sachidananda then it is difficult for us to relate though we also enjoy sat chit ananda aspects we are enjoying ananda aspect we are enjoying the chit aspect the consciousness aspect sat well we 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 stay on the earth for a long time so we are sat to that to that extent of course till the time we realize that we are atma and not the body then we become that is always when we realize so to relate to that kind of lofty concept is not within our reach so that the concept which we are familiar with on day to day basis we are now describing that is that is how parabrahma has been described so nirupadhi we all suffer from upadhi upadhi means limitation desha kala parichanna that means we are divided by time and space our forefathers we have not seen because we are divided by time our future generations we are not going to see because we are divided by time we are not able to see persons who are living in another part of the land they are not able to see us because we are divided by space so the space time and purpose we are all divided by purpose everyone has got a different purpose different motives so all these are upadhi place time motive etc will keep changing they are not constant because they are all products of maya all these are imaginary all these are delusory they are not real no space is real no time is real no motive is real because they have nothing to do with sat chit and ananda so they are called upadhi in vedanta language it is called upadhi upadhi means limitation the jiva is limited immediately by the body he possesses because he confines himself to the understanding that he is the body so just a minute yeah so uh these are the limitations which bind the individual to the body and to the other constraints these are the constraints it is very difficult 
to come out of these constraints because this has been happening not for a short time but over crores of janmas the vasanas are there right at the time of birth so this keeps going on to get out of this is the effort to get out of this is the grace of devi so when we say nirupadhi we want to get out of upadhi that is the meaning so upadhi means limitation for that there is a an uh, example given in the commentary he says if you take a hibiscus flower near a mirror the mirror which was clear all along becomes reddish color in color though mirror by itself has no color has still does not still have any color but because of the flower in front it has assumed a color similarly the concept of avidya the persistence of avidya in the mind of the jiva continues to produce differences if you have got differences then that is the upadhi i mentioned three or four differences time place etc but there are thousands of differences which keep our day to day life engaged we are engaged actually in resolving and spending our time on those differences so that is why gnani is a has tasya karyam na vidyate he has nothing to do but bhagavad gita says that is the gnani state so if you drop all upadhis you will become that kind of tasya karyam na vidyate state now after that is nirishvara ishvara is the one who controls us ishvara means the controller the lord we all have ishvara ishwari or ishvara now both mean the same in this context now devi does not have any any ishvara over her there is no overlord about above her because she is para shakti she is the one who is there right at the beginning of this creation she is going to be there till the end of the creation she is going to be there at all times so and she is the one who creates the other devatas and other living beings other non living beings all are controlled by her of course through various agencies like the ceo controls the big company through various department heads etc etc similarly she controls the creation through many devatas who are being called ishwaras and ishwari by us but actually there is only one ishwari and that is devi so she has no ishwara who controls her there is no controller above her well this is the direct and uh, convincing meaning there are other meaning we will not go into that niraga now from here onwards up to the ishwara it was a clear cut description of parabrahma swarupa uh, functioning but whereas from here onwards it is a direct relation to jiva jiva suffers from various limitations we saw various upadhis various qualities now those qualities are being discussed and it is being said devi does not have any of those qualities and more more importantly she removes those deficiencies those evil qualities from the jivas from those who worship her so niraga ragamathani nirmada madanashini it's like that raga mada etc are supposed to be bad qualities when you say niraga nirmada she doesn't have raga or mada and when you say raga mathani mada nashini it means she removes the raga she removes the mada of jiva so both these are mentioned together so that it is very clear that we should pray to her to get rid of, get rid of all this evil qualities which have been following us through various crores of births he raga free from attachment raga means attachment as we saw earlier attachment is the cause of all bondage and the moment you drop attachment you are free from bondage that is the state of moksha that is the state of release from the cycle of birth and death from the cycle of samsara so attachment is at the root of that that's why it is put at the right at the beginning there are other qualities which are coming nishprodha etc coming later but raga has been put at right at the beginning 
because it is the attachment born out of love love by itself without attachment is beautiful quality all preem all bhakti comes under the category of that love but the moment it becomes an attachment because attachment is to a form love it should be it should lead to a formless state forms are going to be temporary forms are going to go away so as long as you have attachment to forms you are in the raga state and she doesn't have any raga so ni raga well uh, the commentator has given another uh, twist to this meaning which is really beautiful what he says is in chandilya bhakti sutram like narada bhakti sutram chandilya has given his own bhakti sutra there as opposed to the normal meaning of raga as attachment he says raga can also be interpreted as bhakti which we mentioned just now so if it is termed as bhakti she has no one to whom she has to do bhakti that is why she is niraga there is another way of interpreting it not very much required for us raga mathani that means by bestowing vairagya vairagya is free from state of freedom from raga so by by bestowing the state of vairagya on the jeevas he is removing the raga mathana means actually churning means removing nirmada one who does not have mada mada means arrogance haughtiness all this comes under mada all this comes under our sense of possession ahankara and mamakara are at the root of all this even raga is having a basis of ahankara and mamakara so uh, attachment means what you consider yourself as an entity and there is another entity to which you are attached so there are two entities basically number one and you consider the second entity as a possession of yours that is why there is attachment you don't attach yourself to somebody who with whom you are not concerned there is no attachment if it all is that time it will be very minus q so mada means the all this attachment etc leads to a sense of possession sense of arrogance i have one crore in my bank account that fellow has 10 rupees in his bank account so this is mada so this is the quality which is associated with jiva naturally she is free from that and she removes the mada of jivas nishpinta oh, next we go to the next one so nitya mukta nirvikara nishprapancha nirashraya nitya suddha nitya buddha niravadya nirantara nishkarana nishkalanka nirupadhir nireeshwara niraga raga mathani nirmada madana shini निश्चिता निरहंकारा निर्मोह मोहनाशिनी निर्ममा ममता हंत्री निष्पापा पापनाशिनी निष्क्रोध क्रोध शमनी निर्लोभ लोभनाशिनी निस्संशय संशयघ्नि निर्भवा भवनाशिनी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कॉन्सेप्ट्स आर ब्रॉट आउट इन दिस श्लोक वेरी कॉन्सेप्ट्स व्हिच आर एट द वेरी बेस ऑफ आवर एग्जिस्टेंस nishchinta chinta means worry anxiety though chinta has got an ordinary meaning of thought the chinta can be interpreted as any thought but the context in which here it is being used is anxiety worry it is also a thought but thought of anxiety thought of worry now by itself the thought this chinta takes away your energy that is the problem it takes away your peace mental energy mental peace and consequently your physical strength so this is something which should be abhorred 
Shastra says this repeatedly. Shastra has got a very beautiful way of saying it. Shastra says, this is there from Devi Bhagavatam and other texts also. Chita dahati nirjeevam, chinta dahati jeevitam. Chita dahati nirjeevam, there is only one slight difference between chita and chinta. Chita means the funeral bed. There, it burns away only the fellow who has lost his jiva, isn't it? Only the dead body is subject to the flames on the chitta. Whereas, jivitam, the one who is alive and kicking, he is subject to the fire of chinta. Chinta dahati jivitam, it burns, continuously it burns. So this is a beautiful way of saying that because chinta comes because we think we are responsible, we, are, we can do something, we can achieve something. This is what Shastra says repeatedly. You do not think that you are the karta. Bhagavan has given you a certain job to do, you do it without any sense of ownership. Do it absolutely satisfactorily and do not wait for the results to be in your favor. And even that action of having completed the job, Lay it at the feet of Devi. This is what Shastra says repeatedly. This is the essence of Bhagavad Gita also. So, if we are not able to do that, then what happens? Then we own that action, we wait for the result. If the results are not to our satisfaction, we become angry. And then the worry comes in. What went wrong? What should we do next time? This goes on. This is an endless cycle. So, that is Chinta. Near Ahankara. Ahankara is at the base of everything. <clears throat> it is Ahankara, sense of I, which gives rise to Sattva, Rajas, and Tamu Gunas. These Gunas come because of Ahankara, actually. If you do not have Ahankara, these Gunas cannot touch you. This is what Shastra says repeatedly. Why, they are, why Devi is free from Sattva, Rajas, Tamas? She creates Sattva, Rajas, Tamas in us through Maya through that illusory power. But herself, she is free from these gunas. How? Because there is no sense of I-ness. Because I is associated with a body. And she has no body. She thinks the entire universe is her body. All the jivas are her body. So, ahankara is not there. Near moha. Moha is delusion. Oh, that is thinking of dharma as adharma and adharma as dharma. The classic example is Arjuna in Bhagavad Gita. He said, finally, after listening to Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavan asked him, is your moha destroyed? He says, yes. Nashto moha ha smritir labdha. He says, my moha is destroyed. My mriti is attained. Look at the, the word combination there. Moha is positioned along with Smriti. It is actually the loss of Smriti which drives you to Moha. Smriti means memory. And in this case, memory of the right things, memory of Shastra. If you constantly remember the Shastra teaching, Moha will not come. Moha means delusion, thinking of Dharma as Adharma, and Adharma as Dharma because of temptation. You are tempted to do certain things because of your attachment. You are attached to certain things, you want to possess it. In that bargain, you go for shortcuts. These shortcuts are all adharma. So that is moha. Now she destroys moha, moha nashini. And to say that she doesn't have moha, doesn't need any explanation. In fact, Shruti Upanishad says very nice, beautifully, Tatrako moha ha kashto kaha. Ekattvam anupasyataha. Ekattvam anupasyataha. For one who sees singular unity in all creation, for him, tatra, for him, ko mohaha ko kashokaha. What moha is there? What shoka is there? He is free from moha. He is free from shoka. Shoka comes because of loss, sense of loss. There is no possession, there is no question of loss. If we don't possess something, there's no question of loss. So that's what he's saying beautifully there. So all this comes from the concept of moha. Nirmama, mamata, and three. The two go together again, like 
we saw before her mother madanashini like that she doesn't have the sense of mine mamakara mama mein mine ahankara and mamakara mama mein mine my possession my house my wife my job all this which are possessions according to us comes under the sense of mamakara so she is free from mamakara because the entire universe is her hers and entire universe she knows is a maya is a delusion is illusion it will go away because she is going to destroy it herself so something which you have created like a child creating various <coughs> objects with with the toys and then those objects are destroyed by the child herself then she doesn't feel any shoka or moha because of this attitude that is what he is saying here so nirmama mamata hanri she removes the self of mamata from the devas of those who worship her, those who worship her nishpapa papa chamani again papam is something which arises from two causes one cause is you do something which is prohibited in shastra second is you do not do something which is mandated in shastra these are the two things which cause papa sin now the question of uh, sin for her doesn't arise because there is nothing to do tasya karyam na vidyate so she doesn't do anything she is the very form of ananda so there is nothing for her to do when you don't do anything there is no question of sin and that state she will also give us by removing our sins it's a great thing papa nashini is a great thing because imagine crores of janma crores of papas are there to our account now to remove all of them is not easy obviously you have to do so much of prayashita so much of punya karma to obviate this accumulation now all that is done by devi out of compassion papa nashini it is said beautifully in various puranas very beautiful shlokas are there meru parvata mahatrodhi rahihi papasya karmanah satyayanim samasadya nashyati kshana matratah meru parvata matra rahihi papasya karmanah even if your papa karma group rashi the crowd of papas even if it is like a meru parvata the biggest parvata even then kshanat in in no time by worshiping katyayani it gets destroyed padma puranam says that durga archana rato nityam mahapataka sambhavaihi doshayar nalipyate veera padma pastram ivam bhasa <coughs> same way devi bhagavatam says that दर्शन दुर्गा by worshiping her all your papa was destroyed brahmand purana also says that varnashram vihinanam papishtanam nranam api those who have violated varnashram dharma those who have created that kind of sense yadru padhyana matrena dushkritam sukrutayate by just meditating on devi's roopa all those dushkritas become sukrutas or oh, the something because in your account of papas they get transferred in the ledger to the account of punyas what a beauty this is all brahmanda puranam says so out of mere grace out of compassion this should not be misunderstood okay every day i will spend 5 minutes worshiping devi and the rest of the time i will continue to do papas that is in fact very clearly prohibited in shastra saying that it is a misuse of shastra provision Nam Sankirtan has got this kind of provision. Nama Paradha. It is listed there in Nam Sankirtan Shastra. 
10 Nama Pradhas are listed. That means similar uh, statements are made while praising Namas, isn't it? If you do Namas and Ketan, all your Papas are destroyed, etc. Et now, taking advantage of that, I will continue to do Papas and uh, repeat the names. That is the first in the 10 Nama Pradhas. The first in the 10 Nama Pradhas is misusing this provision of being excused of Papas by chanting the Ramas. That means what? That means whatever sins are accumulated to your account, knowingly or unknowingly, they will be destroyed by chanting the Rama today, seriously, sincerely, with Shraddha, on the assumption that you Continue to do sinful acts, saying that I have worshipped Devi, I have done Nama Sankirtan, I have been chanting Nama, I have done this puja, etc., etc. That's the first sin. After doing this, the first very serious sin is this very thought. So, that we have to understood when we understand Papa Nachini. Nishkrodha, Krodha, Samani, Nirlobha, Lobha Nachini. Krodha and Lobha follow. Raga, Dvesha, etc. Attachment, hatred, then anger, greed. These things follow, isn't it? Kama, Krodha, Lobha, Moha, Madha, Matsaryam. These are the six enemies of all of us. Shastras repeatedly say this. So, Krodha is the anger. Bhagavan says in Gita, Name, Dveshyo, Stina, Priyaha. I have no one whom, who is dear to me. I have no one whom I hate. So that is the state we should aim at. So the question of Krodha, anger, anger comes out of hate, anger comes out of not getting what you expected you would get. This is what says repeatedly. So that expectation is at the base of Krodha. You expect something, you have not got it, so you develop Krodha. So, this Krodha, Krodha Samani. Now, uh, regarding Krodha Samani, Apustamba says beautifully, he commentator reports that, very beautiful. Krodha Yukto Yad Yajati Yad Juhoti Yad Arshati Tatasya Harate Sarvam Amakumbho Yasodakam One who is suffering from anger, whatever yajna he does, whatever ahuti he gives in agni, whatever Archana he does in puja, whatever he does. Satascha harate sarvam, all that benefit is completely lost. He does not get a single percentage of the benefit of all his yajna, all his archana, all this ahuti. And what is the example for that? Amakumbha yasodakam. Amakumbha is a pot which is not properly burnt, unburnt clay. If you make a pot and then you start storing water in that, will water stay there? That's what he says. Ama kumbha yathodakam. Like that it will go away. All your benefits will go away. Like the water which could not be retained in that pot. Because anger is at the prosa yukto. We started with that. Then nil lobha. Lobha is greed. Because there is no end to our... This is of course very much... Uh, relevant to our times and to our mentalities, our attitudes, this uh, consumer culture. Whatever you have is not adequate for us. Whatever. Whatever extent you have, whatever good things you have, nothing is adequate. There is always a sense of inadequacy. There is always a sense of striving for something higher, something bigger. That leads to greed, obviously. And uh, <clears throat> There is, in fact, there is a shloka in the Shastra which says, even if the entire three, even if the entire uh, production of food grains is given to you, it will not be adequate. Even if all the women 
are given to you in the creation. They are given to you. That is not the other factor. That is beautifully expressed. That is that sense of greed. Bhagavan says very clearly, very beautifully. He summarizes it in Bhagavad Gita. Trividam narakasya vidam dwaram nasya namat manaha narakasya dwaram. This is the entry to naraka, which completely destroys us. Trividam. There are three types of entry points to naraka, which lead. To our complete destruction, Ashanam Atmanam Kama Krodhasta Salobha Tasma Jeta Trayam Tejet. He has given a very direct instruction. Tasma Jeta Trayam Tejet. So abandon these three: Kama, Krodha, and Lobha. Desire, anger, and greed. Because greed, there is no. There is an example given in Shastra, which says that just as Continuous pouring of ghee in the fire does not put out the fire. On the other hand, it increases the fire. Similarly, continuous satisfaction of your desire does not put out the desire, the sense of inadequacy. On the other hand, it increases. This is the example given in talk. There are shlokas for all that. So that is what we have to remember when we are talk about lobha. Lobha, Lobha Nashini, Devi, out of mere compassion, removes the Lobha from us. This Samshaya, Samshaya, Dhani, Nirbhava, Bhavana, Chini. This Samshaya, Samshaya is doubt. This is not a doubt of this. We have to understand. This doubt is not with reference to whether what the Shastra says is true or not. That this doubt is not that doubt. This doubt is not that. Whether we have faith in what Shastra says, Shastra says a person takes one year after his death to reach Yamaloka. Now, do I believe it or not? That is not the samshya. No, samshya is doubt in the process. Doubt in the process of attaining God. Doubt in the process of removing our attachment, etc., etc. The path of attaining Devi. We think we have understood the path, but when you start practicing the path, lot of doubts come. This is the experience of all the saints, all the sadhakas, all of them, without fail, have recorded this, and uh, they have all gone to their gurus with those samshyas, and guru has been dispelling those doubts, no doubt. But these doubts will never be completely dispelled, whatever the guru tries. This, the arising of doubts will never stop. Till you reach a state of jnana, this is what Upanishad itself says: "Bhijyate hridaya granthi hi siddhante sarvasam shaya ha shiyante jasya karmani tasmin drishte paravare tasmin drishte paravare devata bhagavati or bhagavan is para avara." He is neither superior nor inferior. He is above. So he is the one who has done this creation of para and nara. Certain things are good. Certain things are less. So he is above all that. So unless you have darshan of him, that means drishte para bare. Once you have had darshan, darshan means experiencing in the heart. Darshan does not mean seeing something with our eyes outside. That is darshan, no doubt. That is not the darshan which will lead to the state. That that is the darshan in the path. That is the darshan in the path of bhakti. But that is not we are, what we are talking about. This final darshan of that final experience, that anubhuti in your heart. When you get that, then what happens? He says, "Vidyate grada yag granthi." You saw a lot of granthi last time, Brahma granthi, Vishnu granthi. Rudra granthi, etc. Now here he says, "Grada yag granthi." We perhaps. Summarizing all this together in one term, that is the knots in the heart. He says, the knots of ajnana, the knots of avidya, will all get untied. Avidya, they, they will all get broken. Chidyante sarvasam shaya. All your doubts will be removed. He says, this is the time. Till that time, the state of freedom from all doubts does not arise. You see, he makes it very clear in operation. 
Kriyande Dasya Karmani. What happens? The karmas which are to your account, those also get destroyed. Jnana Agni Dadda Karmana. This is the state of Jnana. So, this Samshaya, she doesn't have any Samshaya, obviously, and she also kills the Samshaya, the doubts of the Bhaktas. Now, here in the commentary, he is saying that Guru is to be treated as non different from Devi. That is why Guru can take you to this state because he is non different from Devi. So, when there is description of the Guru, he is also being described the same way. Nirbhava Bhavanashini. Bhava is samsara, is creation. Bhava is creation. So she has no creation, she has no adi, she was never created, and she will ensure that you are also not created again. You have been created now as a result of your past karma. She will destroy all your karma. She will see that you are not born again. So that is removal of the bondage of samsara, bhavanashani. In Devi Bhagavatam, Devi herself has given this promise. Aham vai matparan bhaktan aishwaram yoga maashritan. Whom she delivers like this? Matparan bhaktan. Those bhaktan who are completely devoted to her. Matparan. Aishwaram yoga maashritan. They to her pursuing this yoga. This desire to become one with Devi. That is yoga. Those who are pursuing that religiously, Aishwaram Yoga Machita, Kamtara Tadara, Asmate, Uddharam, Achire Natu, Uddharami Achire, I bring them up, I relieve them from this Samsara Tadara in no time. Achira is this is Devi's promise. So, various qualities of Parabrahma's. Parabrahma, Surupani, we, we, we went, and went through them and now we are looking at various acts of compassion of Devi by which she removes the infirmities, the defects of the devotees. Nishchanta, Nirahankara, Nirmoha, Mohanashini, Nirmama, Mamata, Hantri, Nishpapa, Pavanashini, Nishkrodha krodha samani nilobha lobhana chini nissamshaya samshaya ghni nirbhava bhavana chini Nirvikalpa nirabhadha nirbeda bedhana sini nirna samruti mathani nishkriya nishparigraha nistula nila chikura nirapaya niratyaya durlabha durgama durga Dukkahantri Sukha Prada. Nirvikalpa. Vikalpa means alternative in the normal meaning. It refers to variety, diversity. That is the normal sense in which Vikalpa is used in literature. But in Yoga Sutra, Patanjali Yoga Sutra, he gives a different, beautiful different interpretation. He says, Shabda Matra Anupadhi Vastu Shunyo Vikalpaha Shabda Matra Anupadhi Vastu Shunyo Vikalpaha That which is known by only a sound. That which is known only by a sound, but actually it does not exist. Like the horns of a hat, Shastra gives this kind of example. The hair does not have any horn. If the horn of a hair, there is a shabda, the description. This I have made you understand, or this, but does it exist? It doesn't exist. So this is Vikalpa. He says, we talk about things which don't exist. In fact, this applies to entire creation. If you extend this ideology, it extends to entire creation, but creation doesn't exist in reality. So all our words, all our talk refers to Vikalpa only in an extended manner. So because Amba does not have, Devi does not have the sense of Vikalpa, 
this sense of assuming truth, relating truth to something which does not exist, which we all suffer from. So she is Nirvikalpa. So it has to be understood in the proper context. There is another uh, meaning which is Vikalpa can also be interpreted as an opposing view, the opponent's view, like we have in the court of law. There is a proponent, there is a deponent, there is an opponent. Now, this opposing view question doesn't arise because there is only one view which is correct. We are in a state of Advitiya. There is no question of opposing view. So, Nirvikalpa. Nirabadha. Abadha means agitation. Mm. Abadha means having an agitated mind. So that kind of thing does not exist for Devi. Now all this Devi description should apply to the Jnani. So we should reach that state. This is the aim, destination. So he is giving an example for that. Uh, from Vedanta he has taken this. He says Vedanta repeatedly gives this example. That is when you see a shell on a seashore, you think it is silver. It shines beautifully in the sunlight. The shell, ordinary shell, seashell, shines like a piece of silver. So you mistake that for silver. And the moment you go near and take it in your hand and you find it's only a shell, you throw it away. This is abadha. This is the mental agitation. This is the mental Agitation, we get agitated on little things. Nirbheda, now this follows from the earlier descriptions. It is the difference which causes all this. When there is only one thing, only there is only one thing, there is no second thing, then Bheda does not arise, love does not arise, hate does not arise. Tumhivsa parama shakti ananta parameshtini sarva bheda vinirmukta sarva bheda vinashini kurma prana. Devi, there's the sotra of Devi. Sarva bheda vinirmukta sarva bheda vinashini. You are free from all kinds of differences and you destroy all kinds of differences. And uh, kurma prana continues to say there is no difference between shakti and shakti man. Shakti and Shiva. Some people think Shakti is different and Shakti Man, that Shiva is different. There are two entities. No, there's only one entity. We use these terms for us to understand. That is what he is saying. That is also a difference. Even that difference doesn't exist. Nirbheda. Shakti Shakti Mato or Bheram Vadanti Aparamarthataha Vadanti Aparamarthataha. Those who are not in the right Paramartha Tattva, they, 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 they our, that there is a difference between Shakti and Shakti Maha. Abhedam kaan upashyanti yogina sattva chantakaha. Those yogis who are meditating on truth, those who are wedded to truth, they don't see any difference between Shakti and Shakti Maha. Abhedam kaan upashyanti. So this kind of Veda, sense of difference, she will destroy in devotees also, Veda Nashini. Nirnasha Mrityu Mathani, the one who is free from death, one who is free from destruction. Satyam Jnanam Anantam Brahma. Anantam, no end, no destruction. So Mrityu Mathani, for devotees also, sense of death will not be there. Means that fear of death will go away and you will become one with Devi after you drop the body. Till you drop the body, you have the body, you have the sense of difference, at least for day-to-day -day living. So, at the level of the mind, at the level of the heart, you might have reached the state of jnana. Now, that also will go away once you drop the body. You are called Jaivan Mukta. That is why. Those, those you are possessing a body, you are still liberated. Liberated even while in body. That is the state of the Jaivan Mukta jnanis. Now, in the case of great devotee like Markandeya, for example, he was protected, rescued from the clutches of Yamadharma Raja by Parmeshwara. And then he was given a long life, Charanji Vitva. That is also coming under this Mrityu Mathani, that is fear of death of Jeevas. But that is the lesser meaning. The higher meaning is 
fear of death of the body in all respects that is we do not want this body at all so there is no question of fearing death ata tasma vikyate mamrata ate iti amrutattvam prapnoti yakshatvam prapnoti nityatvam prapnoti svayam rudro bhavati tripura upanishad says that that he becomes rudra himself this devotee he develop three eyes trakshatvam he becomes he uh, attained the quality of lasting forever nityatvam prapnoti अथ तस्मादुच्यते मामृतात यति अमृतत्वं प्राप्नोति दट इज अमृतात इट्स सेस इन द रुद्र मंत्र इट सेस दैट अमृतत्वं प्राप्नो हे दैट इज मृत्यु मखनी निष्क्रिया वी सॉ दिस अ लिटिल वी सॉ दिस अ लिटिल एले तस्य कार्यम न विद्यते देयर इज नथिंग टू बी डन फॉर द ज्ञानी बिकॉज़ द एक्शन इज ऑलवेज प्रॉम्प्टेड बाय a desire desire prompted action if you are doing action without any desire absolutely no trace of desire then you are in this state of naishkarmya in fact there is a book called naishkarmya siddhi written by sureshwara acharya on based on the teachings of adi shankara so that is the state naishkar the bhagavad gita also refers to this state of naishkarmya that is action less state as long as you possess the body action will be there even your breathing is an action even your lifting hand is an action even your eating is an action without eating without lifting hand without walking a few steps you cannot achieve anything with this body body is required for all that actions are required we are not talking about those actions those actions are involuntary actions which are not given any meaning any importance by the jnani he also performs this he eats like all of us he sleeps like all of us he walks here and there like all of us but he is not performing any action he is in the state of nishkriya because there is no desire prompted action he can live without food he can live without air he can live without sleep because he sleep food air etc or for the body and he is not the body he realizes that he will be provided with air he will be provided with food he will be provided with sleep if bhagwan destines that he has to continue with this body he knows that so that is the state of nishkriya that is we saw earlier performing mandatory actions avoiding prohibited actions that is what dharma tells us to do that is for actions which are prompted by desire for those who have drop it is there no action no shastra no dharma for them that is the state of nishkriya now we saw a few minutes ago that by mere presence actions take place this is the nishkriya state by your mere presence in fact devi bhagavan says that very clearly very nicely about a jnani a jnani simply by being present without doing anything he creates so much of knowledge so much of peace all around and devi bhagavatam goes all out in praise of that kind of jnani he uh, bhagavatam says that he purifies the entire area the entire pradesh where jnani is by by merely doing nothing that is nishkriya state यदा सन्निधि मात्रेण गंधः क्षोभाय जायते मनसो नोपकर्तृत्वात् सदासो परमेश्वरः एवं विष्णु पुराणं तत्र इति बेरेन ऑल पुराणं दिस कांसेप्ट दिस परिग्रह परिग्रह मीन्स इन फैक्ट परिग्रह इज अ टर्म व्हिच इज यूज्ड कांस्टेंटली इन एसोसिएशन विद दानम दानम इज गिविंग परिग्रह इज रिसीविंग There are six duties assigned to a brahmana. Out of the last two are this dhanam and parigraham, giving dhanam and giving, receiving dhanam. This is the first and sixth duty. First of all are learning Vedas and teaching Vedas. First two, first two. Remember, the first one is learning Vedas. Then only you can call yourself a brahmana. 
Secondly, teaching is very important. Not only you should learn, you should also teach. Third is performing yoga. And fourth is acting as a priest for others in yoga. You have to perform yoga yourself and you have to also help others perform yoga. These are mandatory duties for a Brahmana. Six duties. Oh, only there are six duties. So I remembered this in the context of this parigraha. Parigraha means acceptance. Now, it, it, in, in its extended meaning, that was the uh, specific meaning, what we saw now. In its extended meaning, it means our relatives. That means those whom you consider as your possession. Because there also, when you say you are receiving the sense of receiving, sense of possession comes, isn't it? So here, parigraha means any possession which you have, including your relatives, including your possessions, properties, etc., etc. Now, there is nothing like this for Devi. This Tula, there is no parallel. Tula means parallel. If you see Tula, Rashi, there will be a balance on which there are two pans, isn't it? So if the two pans are in equal state, then it is balanced. So that is called Tula. So Nistula means there is no parallel. There is nothing which you can weigh against Devi. Unparalleled Nistula. Tetu Drishtanta Vardhitam, Shastra Setu. There is another term which is also used in Shastra, Athamana. Athamana means the same. That means there is no equal. The famous uh, Jhana Shloka in Ramayana. Dorbhiryukta Chaturbhihi Spatika Manimayi Vakshamala Amdhana Kakte Naikena Padmam Titama Pichachakam Pustabam Pustakancha Parena Bhata Kundendu Shankha Spatika Maniriva Bhatamana Samana Kame Vagdevata Nesu Asudrityam Bhatamana Asamana She is shining and she is no equal. Beautifully placed the Sanskrit word. So, so that is having the same meaning as this Tula. Neela Chikura with black hair is a description of the form. Neela Chikura. Nirabhaya, one who is free from danger. Danger is something which you have a possession, isn't it? Only when you have a possession. The possession is subject to danger. You have no possession, there is no question of danger. Destruction, danger, etc., are covered by apaya. Then you have niratyaya. Atyaya means limit. There is no limit for her. The entire world is her creation, the entire universe is her creation. She is not limited by time and space. So, no limits apply to her. For limited divas, plot of limits are there. That is why dharma also comes into play. Bhagavatam also says, dharma seto naam vakta karta abhirakshita. Vakta karta abhirakshita. She is the one who has given, spoken the dharma. She is the one who performs the dharma when she takes an avatara. She shows by example and she protects those dharmas by seeing that their dharmas are properly followed in the creation. Dharma setu, no, dharma setu, dharma, dharma is always described as a setu. Setu means a boundary, a protection, protective wall. A bund wall is setu. So, dharma setu. So, that is that kind of limit is there for dharma, but that kind of limit does not exist for her, for Devi, because she is above dharma and adharma. The other day somebody had asked a question about, what about ajnanam and adharma? Does it, does it form part of Devi? Yes, it forms part of Devi when she takes a form. When she takes a form. Because if you say the adharma and ajnana are outside of Devi, then you have to postulate a theory that there, are, there is a second entity other than Devi, because there is only one entity, so everything is all-inclusive entity, and the dharma, other, other ajnana, etc. form part of that entity. 
Farming part does not mean that it, it is an essential part. It is a part of Maya, which is a power of her, which exists in her. It is not part of the personality. So it's a little tricky concept if you have to understand. Durlabha. Durlabha means very difficult to attain. This is the direct meaning. Labham is attainment, isn't it? Profit. Something which you have attained. So Durlabha is something which is difficult to attain. Even for yogis, it is very difficult to attain Devi. This does not mean that uh, she is impossible to attain, so you drop all your attempts. It's not for that purpose. It is only for accentuating your efforts. Because sometimes all of us feel, I have put in so much of effort, I have not gone to that state where I expected to reach. This is a common complaint of any devotee. So to give us that kind of peace of mind that your efforts are no doubt good, they have been rewarded. Rewards are not visible to you. Sometimes all rewards are not visible. These are invisible rewards. The progress is invisible, but it is there. So to encourage us, we must know that she is Durlabha, Durgama. Durgama means some, someone who cannot be approached. Very difficult to reach, we say Durlabha. So something very difficult to approach. Yeah, for Asuras, she is completely out of reach. This is mainly for those kinds of people, Durgama. This is for discouraging evil qualities. The moment you develop evil qualities, she becomes Durgama. Unapproachable. Durga. Now, Durgama and Durga should normally mean the same. Durgam is a fort, something which you cannot uh, approach. That is why you are in a fort. There is a moat outside the fort. You cannot cross the moat. You cannot go near the fort, etc. Et Durga is a fort. Durga is somebody like a person in a fort. But here, since Durgama also has given that meaning, Durga has been interpreted as a particular name instead of giving the general meaning for which there is a lot of references available in Puranas. Now, Devi herself says why she is called Durga. Tatrai vitavadishyami vadishyami durga maksham mahasuram durga devi tivikhyatam dhanmena amadhavishyati durga sattachati Because I am going to kill that asura called Durga ma, I will be known as Durga. Devi Purana also says that Supaladi Pate Supaladi Paye Durge Darita Ripusan Kate Deva Shakra Deyo Yena Tena Durga Prakirtita Because Devas are being protected from difficulties, she is known as Durga. In Devi Bhagavadam, there is a Nice story of a king called Sudarshana. He comes in the line of Rama in Surya Vamsha. He has Darshan of Devi and uh, his father-in-law, he is the king of Kashi. His name is Subahu. Now, Subahu prays to Devi, you please stay there, stay here in Kashi permanently. Nagare Atratvaya Madaha Satavyam Sarvada Shive Durga Devi Tinam Nabe Vam Shatirika Sam Sita. You be here in the name of Durga. So if you go to Kaji, you will find a Durga Devi temple there, very famous, very celebrated. This is the story behind this. Lastly, the Devi Bhagavatam defends Durga in Kumari Puja we saw during Navaratri from the age of two up to the age of ten. So, the nine-year-old Kumari is called Durga. Navavarsha Bhave Durga. So, these are various names given to various children, Kumari. Then, Durga, Dukha Hantri Sukhapraga. Dukha Hantri, remover of sorrows. Sukhapraga, giver of comforts. Now, sorrows and comforts are relative or can be small, can be large. You can interpret it as uh, normal day-to-day -day sufferings we have, normal day-to-day -day reliefs we 
beyond for yes those are also covered here apart from that if you think of a higher larger canvas the continuing as a jiva is the greatest to dukkha and relief from that state is the greatest to sukha so that also is covered by sukha prada and dukha santri tasange vayam labdha anandi bhavati even veda upanishad says this. by attaining the state you attain ananda that is sukha prada uh, time is up we stop with this we continue next week nirvikalpa nirabadha nirbheda bhedana chini nirnasha mrutti mathani nishkriya nishparigraha nistulani rachikura nirapaya niratyaya durlabha durga ma durga dukkhantri sukha prada uh, any questions today uh, th- those are questions please unmute yourselves and ask questions please turn on your video if you can also any questions guruji no questions no uh, i think the, the today's uh, portion was quite straight and simple uh, we close for the day and we meet again next saturday at 7 pm est as usual and we continue with the lalita sahasrama shlokas nama parvati pataye har har mahadeva gopika jeevana smaranam govinda govinda sri rajarajeshwariye jay jaya